Construction began on the CSS Richmond at the Gosport Navy Yard in March of 1862. It was obvious that the Confederates would have to abandon the entire Tidewater area. The Virginia drew too much water to make it all the way to Richmond, which is where they figured it would have to go. So she had to be destroyed. The Richmond was not finished, but was finished enough that they could tow it up to Richmond. It was towed up to Richmond and finished at Rockets. She then became the flagship of the James River Squadron, which was tasked with guarding Richmond from uh, assault by the Union Navy coming up the James River. She saw action in 1864 uh, by shelling the um, uh, Dutch Gap uh, installation of Grant's Union Army. She also shelled the Union forces at Fort Harrison and um, at Chapin's Bluff. In January of 1865, she saw action at the Battle of Trent's Reach when the, Union, or when the Confederate Navy attempted to pass the Union obstructions at City Point. She was on the 3rd of April, 1865, scuttled at Chapin's Bluff on the evacuation of Confederate troops from the city. The James River Squadron saw little action. They completed their mission because the Union Navy didn't make it past the obstructions at Dury's Bluff to come up and bombard Richmond. Uh, during our recent naval exhibit here at the museum, we had some artifacts that were on display from the Richmond. When I was talking to the museum prior to the opening of the Navy exhibit, there was an interest in uh, a model of the Shannon door for obvious reasons, and they wanted a cutaway of an ironclad. Soon as I said I would do it, I said, what have I done? I have never built a cutaway. I have never built my own plank on frame model, and information on the Richmond is almost totally non-existent. There are no photographs, there are no plans, there are no real contemporary paintings. There's one which shows it in the distance about that big. Very few written accounts of it. I started with what is the oldest known picture of the Richmond. Uh, you have to go to about the 1890s, to my knowledge. You go to the official records of the Union and Confederate Navy, which has illustrations of most of the major ships. The Richmond is illustrated there. But you have to be careful of that source because they were painted for purposes of filling the pages in a book by people who had not seen the ships, who had not served on the ships, and whose primary interest was in filling the page of the book. Artistically, they are nice, but generally you can find problems with them with various little details that makes you question how accurate the whole thing is. I don't know whether you've ever heard of the CS gunboat teaser, which has the distinction of being the Confederates' only aircraft carrier. The teaser also had on board plans for the CSS Richmond. Why a tugboat laying mine cables in the James River within sight of the Federal Navy had plans for the Richmond, I have no idea, but she did. She was captured by the Federal Navy. The plans were captured and reviewed. Uh, in the official records, there are some good to not so good sketches from that. There are some very, very bad pictures drawn in Harper's Weekly and other newspapers of the day that were just off the wall bad and not to be used. They may have appealed to the readers of the time, but they were absolutely useless and incorrect. You have that information available. The rest you have to fill in piece by piece. For example, if you have the back half of the gun deck, you can extend the gun deck out. If you have the back half of the bilge deck, you can extend that out. It's a question of doing a jigsaw puzzle piece by piece.